Welcome to the local Assembly 2 4 podcast in 3, 2, 1. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the local podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Hauser. Today we have Brian Uran from the Live Casino. Yeah, How happy to doing? be here. Excited to be here. I'm doing great. We are uh, narrowing in on getting open for this uh, for this community. Yeah, dude, it's so exciting because every time I go back there, like anytime I drive back there, you guys just do so much work. Like it's it looks so crazy every time I go back there. It is unbelievable. Every time I I walk through the casino just to show people around or get or get a status update on what's going on. It's like. You know, every week it's an unbelievable amount of progress that's been made. If if you would have asked me, you know, two months ago, are we going to hit our opening dates? It's like this is crazy. There's nothing in here, but now right. it's full. It's almost full. Like there, there's dozens of workers in there moving around the clock, setting up slot machines. The exterior looks great. Uh, it, it's unbelievable the amount of progress those guys can make in a day. Yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing. Like I would see, uh, I follow you guys on Instagram and stuff. So I, I see like, you know, you guys wheeling some slot machines in there every once in a while. Yeah. We did our first slot load in about a month ago, I'd think. And, um, now the whole place is full of slot machines. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's That's exciting. So wild. That's awesome. And I like, I mean, like I said, I'm back there pretty often. I got two boys. So it's like, you know, we're at Dick's all the time. Yeah. We're back there buying sporting goods. Um, my wife is always at TJ Maxx. Um, and so it's just like, I see this progress all the time and, uh, it's, it's fun to wonder like, you know, what's going on in there? Is it still like, because you could see in for a little while and you know, it's just like, you could see the, uh, the, the beams and the, in the studs and stuff like that. And you're like thinking, what is, what's up now? So yeah, it's, we're, uh, it's we're cool. excited. We actually got off uh, this morning. We were talking about a, a little social media campaign of a sneak preview series for inside because oh, it, yeah. People are excited about seeing the inside of the facility, and while we don't want to show off the whole the whole facility, we right. want people to have to come to see everything. For sure, we do want to give little nuggets because uh, it's really impressive. I was just walking through there, and that screen that's inside, that's going to show all the games. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's bigger. It's larger than life. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw the the post. I was just like, whoa! I didn't know if that was just a picture or if that was a screen. And uh, when I read the thing and it said it was a screen, I was like, well, yeah. what is, this is massive. No, nowhere better to watch the Steelers on, right? a, on a Sunday than going to be in sports <laughs> and social. It's unbelievable. An 800 foot tall Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. So tell me about the casino. How did live casino come to be? Yeah, we started in Maryland. It's a, it's a family owned you know, casino company. We started at Live Casino and Hotel in Maryland nine years ago. We opened June 6th of 2012, and we've just been evolving ever since. You know, we only opened with slot machines only. That was the regulation in Maryland at the time, and then we quickly added table games as soon as Maryland allowed for that. And then, you know, this company keeps evolving and keeps adding assets that our customers want, and so they wanted more restaurants. And so we gave them more restaurants and they wanted a hotel. So we built them a hotel and they wanted a poker room. So we built them a poker room. And now that was over the course of, of nine years. And in the middle of all that, the Cordish family always has their eye on expansion and what, what we can do um, to bring our brand to other communities that we feel align with the core values of our, of our brand. And we went out and we secured a license to build a casino in Philadelphia. And through all of that, the state of Pennsylvania opened up another series of laws that allow for even more gaming expansion in Pennsylvania. And we quickly narrowed in on Southwest Pennsylvania as an area for expansion. And through a process of which communities are, you know, vibrant communities. They align with our brand. They align with our morals and our values. And then there's some other laws that the gaming control board required us as far as like how far we could be away from certain competition and things. Sure. Westmoreland County, Hempfield Township, Greensburg was an ideal location. And we went after that and we secured the bid and here we are building. Yeah, man, it's exciting. When the whole like, idea was first kind of presented to the community like we saw this in like a newspaper article and we were just kind of like whoa a casino 
like here, this is awesome. Like it was it, not everybody was like that. It was just kind of like, you know, there's this uh, there's this message board. It's called Across Westmoreland. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with Across Westmoreland. I am. Okay. I am. So in the beginning of all of that, uh, kind of happened to be, you know, the beginnings of like this podcast or at least the idea of this podcast. And I was like, you know, really kind of focusing in on the businesses around here, what's happening locally, um, you know, adult things. And I was just like, okay, so... I'm seeing that there's a casino coming in that's so, ex- it's exciting. Um, you know, I'm a guy in my 30s, my wife, you know, we're late 30s and, and we just, we want to like hang out. We want to do things. We don't always want to have to drive to Pittsburgh to go do something fun. You know, it's like meet us 15 minutes from our house. That's great. Um, so we see the casino is like, this is happening and, you know, we're excited. And, aqu- and across Westmoreland, you know, you get you get some split decision. There's there's people in there that were kind of like, hey, I don't know, uh, a casino, that kind of sounds dangerous. I mean, like, people are very old school around here. And so what, I guess, makes you guys different than the any other casino? Like, I, I, what I'm guessing is old people don't want this to turn into Vegas is, is what they don't want to happen. But... I don't see it as, as going that way. What makes live casino different? Yeah, and, and any time that there's any casino expansion, uh, there's going to be people on both sides mm-hmm. that... Not yeah, sure, some people are very excited about the casino coming, and some people ha- are a little bit hesitant. And what we're hoping to show those people that are a little bit hesitant is that we're a different company. We're a different brand. Um, all of the concerns about crime and you know all, all the sort of quote unquote bad things that they've seen on TV and movies right. about casinos. We're not going to bring them. We're actually, we're, we have a state of the art surveillance system. We're going to have state of the art security personnel. They don't have to worry about any of that. Right. We're building something here that this community deserves quite frankly. And it is something that they, when they come in for the first time, when this community walks in the doors for the first time, they're going to be astounded that we built this place and this is in their backyard. Yeah. Um, you know, we do things a little bit differently. We have a high uh, philanthropic culture. Mm -hmm. The Cordish companies and Live Casino have been named top philanthropic companies in Maryland for, you know, who who knows how many years running. We get active in the communities. We're at all of the food drives. We're at all of the, you know, Race for the Cures, a a popular Mm -hmm. uh, October festival. Yeah. We do things for the community. We are here for the community. We're going to drive tons of economic impact. And guess what? The people that wanted something for families, we're going to have an under 21 accessible place upstairs. No casino games, but it's going to be an unbelievable sports and social is what we call it experience. No way. Where, you know, we talk about layering the experience all the time, where if you want to come to the casino, you can come and play at the slot machine and have a burger and a nice night. Or if you want, you can just come watch the football game, bet on the football game and go bowling. Or if you want, you can just come for the bowling, have a beer and, you know, have the kids playing shuffleboard. You know, we Mm -hmm. talk about layering of experiences all the time and that's what we've built here. Um, And I I couldn't be more excited to open. I couldn't be more excited to finally get to show this community, this local community, what's being built in their backyard. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it's so cool to me just because like, I mean, I've lived in different places and there's always like, you know, different things to do and different levels of, you know, fun that you can have in your own backyard. Uh, Greensburg for me, my whole life was never that exciting. So now that there is this like resurgence of the community and the town and there's all these like small businesses opening up. And now that we have like the casino as a thing, I mean, that is really, I think, so important because, like, you know, there's people that they go out and travel. You know, there's the the people that are probably going to just, like, go play one night, go home or whatever. But there's some people that they love casinos, and they're going to go, and they're going to stick around. They're going to get a room somewhere. Uh, and then possibly explore Greensburg, go downtown, grab something to eat, or, you know, go shopping at a local shop and stuff. It's just going to bring a lot of revenue to the town. And that's the way I see it. Yeah. And this community, I'm new to the area, but Mm -hmm. this community is incredibly vibrant, even in the face of COVID-19 and all the the negative things that it's done to the local communities. Yeah. 
the amount of businesses in this area that are like just like you said they're local they are it's a it's a vibrant community the people in this town are awesome people and they're trying to i can feel it they're trying to build something here and we're hopeful to be the anchor of that you know we want all of those businesses to succeed because if if those businesses succeed we succeed it's a big partnership we get people coming from out of town coming to experience greensburg just like you said they maybe they come for a bite to eat at the casino they play a few a couple hours on the slot machines or what whatever the case is and then venture out to the local breweries you know Mm -hmm. we just we hope to be that hub and and this community is vibrant and it is it is building i can feel it i'm a new newcomer to the area Uh, and it's an exciting time to be part of the greensburg area yeah for sure i was just uh i was at an art gallery this weekend uh the new green beacon gallery it's uh down here and um a couple of the guys were there and they were saying like how how awesome would this be if like i don't know maybe uh we could get some local art like in the casino somewhere and i was like hey i mean there's no there's no sense in not like you know reaching out to them and asking and just saying like you know because like you said it's a partnership so like you know somewhere down the line um or like you know having one of the local breweries on tap like you know go in and, and you can get like an invisible man, like at the, at the beer bar, at the bar or whatever. But, um, it's really just like, it's very cool. I think it's a, it's a big opportunity for, you know, like you said, this partnership between you guys and, and this local community of small businesses and things. That's right. And we've talked to a dozen local businesses, mm-hmm. partners in the area about different ways that we could intelligently partner together yeah. to, you know, both help our business, help their business, grow the community, help the customers at the end of the day of both places. Um, and the, the appetite to do those kinds of partnerships is high. We're still in the exploratory phase of a lot of them, sure. but we are yeah. super excited to partner with local businesses in this area. And, and like I said, keep growing this community. Yeah. It's awesome. I saw actually on your, uh, your Instagram, your personal Instagram. You were you were brewing some beer this weekend, huh? I was uh, first time ever brewing some beer. I yeah. was uh, I was joking around with my fiance that maybe we'll start a a local another local brewery. I, right. I was actually listening to your uh, to your podcast with Laurel Highlands, the the Poor Tour. Oh and I was yeah. Like, I was telling her I was like maybe we're gonna get on Poor Tour three point There you go. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was I was just brewing some local uh, some beer in in my basement. First time. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. I'll it's- I'll have to. Uh, Send you a, a bottle in a, a few weeks. I would enjoy that. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually my first uh, podcast was with Invisible Man Brewing, uh, just a year, like almost a year to the date, um, and uh, that's how they started. The brewer, his name's Ted. He started brewing in his basement and kind of worked his way up from five gallon buckets to you know bigger tanks, and now they're making beer. And yeah, it's awesome. That is awesome. I, I probably have to keep my day job for a little bit longer at least, yeah. but uh, <laughs> no, that's a really cool story. That's awesome. And and, and they're an awesome brewery. I've been oh, there yeah. a couple of times. You have been? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's, yeah, it's awesome. Very good. Um, as far as like the restaurants and things in there, we're, uh, we're getting some Flavortown. We <laughs> are. Let's talk get, about Flavortown. Get ready for a trip to Flavortown. Yeah, right. we partnered up with, with Guy Fieri. He's bringing his uh, Guy Fieri's American Kitchen and Bar. Mm-hmm. And we we're still the menu still under development, but you can all but guarantee that there's going to be some local favorites on there, as well as some of his, you know, nationally renowned dishes. Yeah, uh, you know, I, one that I'm I'm pretty sure I can release is trash can nachos. They are unbelievable. I've had them, and they will knock your socks off. Yeah, but the rest of the menu is still sort of under development. But you know, one of the things that he he likes to do in his restaurants is you know, tailor the menu to the local. He doesn't just like to come in with a blanket menu that goes across right. all of his restaurants. We like to tailor certain aspects of the the menu to local flair, local favorites, and we're yeah. excited. I can't wait uh, to open that place. That is an explosion for your taste buds is going to be at Guy Fieri's. That's awesome. I'm like, I'm real excited because it's like, you know, there's a lot of people in this area that, uh, you know, we really, we have access to some really good restaurants around here. And, um, you know, as you get older, uh, you tend to like beer or food or something like that. You know, it's like you turn into this uh, handcrafted uh, aficionado. 
And um, so it's just, it's nice to have like a, such a, a big renowned restaurant like that so close um, because, I mean, I couldn't imagine just being like, you know, going to those types of places only when you're in, uh, you know, Atlantic City or Vegas or something like that. Like those that's awesome that it's just here. Yep. It's just like right here. Food is, you know, food is the hub that it brings people together. It, it gets people does. talking. It gets, you know, families and friends and, you know, acquaintances sitting across the table from each other, having a good meal, having a good drink. And, yeah. you know, we, we hope again to be that hub for the entire community where they can come, they can gather, they can eat, drink, then they can go out and play if that if that suits them. Or they can go upstairs to our sports and social, which we'll get into more in a second, and also play. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, shuffleboard, ping pong, darts, whatever. It, it, it really is food, but food is the centerpiece of all of that. Food is what brings people together, and we just hope to give them an experience that is tailored to their own activities and their own interests by the end of the night. Yeah. It's so awesome because, like, there's there's some things about Pittsburgh food that, you know, a lot of people don't understand. Pierogies. Pierogies. Uh, French fries on salad. That was, that's can where I, name, I was going. Can I name some more weird ones? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the big thing. Like, you go, uh, you know, we're traveling or something. I was in New Orleans, and um, I got a chicken salad. There were no French fries on my salad. And at that point, it was okay because I was, uh, you know, on the keto diet. So I was just like, hey, no French fries on the salad. The guy looked at me and was like, what? He was like, I ain't putting French yeah, fries on your worry. salad anyway. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's right. Okay, this is a weird thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, probably have to understand that you got to reflect some of those uh, those local things in that menu. Yeah, can I can I tell you a story? I, I, Absolutely. I love buffalo chicken pizza. It's one of my favorite things. I've been it's ordering so it for a dozen years now. And I moved up here, and we're sort of on, on the lookout. Everybody, when you move to a new place, you're on the lookout for your, your favorite pizza, pizza joint. joint. I've gone through a, a couple, and then I ordered a buffalo chicken pizza from... I'm, I'm flipping through. I'm like, which has buffalo chicken pizza? Pizza Siena. All right, that sounds good. It gets pretty good reviews. I order the buffalo chicken pizza. It gets to my house, and my power's out that day. I don't know what happened, but my power was out. So I'm like, it's pitch black. I like have my phone light on. I don't, like, I don't have a, a lantern anywhere that <laughs> yeah. I can just flip on, and... I open the pizza, take a bite into it, and I'm, what on earth did I just bite into? I, you know, it was like potato wedges on top of a buffalo chicken pizza, and I was like, oh, yeah, here, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> and it was, once I got past that, it was so good. I've ordered it three more times since yeah. then. But, uh, yeah, Dude. Pittsburghers love their food. Greensburgers love their food. We love and our they, potatoes. And you have <laughs> a twist on everything for sure, even, even buffalo chicken pizza. Right. Oh, my God. Let me uh, let me throw you in the direction of a really great place, Gianelli's. Gianelli's have been there a uh, oh. couple times. Do you go to is it Gianelli's one or two? I always go to the one on two on right on Route Thirty. Yeah, right on what, Route Thirty. Uh, we There's happen one to live a little closer to Gianelli's Thomas School one. Road. Yeah, uh, that one, man. I'll tell you what, they. I've been eating that pizza. That's been my favorite pizza since I was like ten years old. I'll have to give it a try. I I, we've it. been to Gianelli's too a couple of times. Me and my coworkers yeah. at, after after work and unbelievable red sauce oh yeah for it's, sure it's unbelievable it's something i used to work there they had they had a little sugar in there <laughs> it's sweet it's very sweet um but uh talk to me about the sports and social this is like this is mind-blowing to me because mainly we have two boys uh my nieces are like the same age they are kind of getting to that point where when we were young we used to hang out at that mall that mall was like the cool place to hang out now it's like kids really kind of don't do that as much as they used to when I was a kid. Like we'd go hang out in the in the uh, food court, and it was you know we'd grab something to eat, hang out there, shop, do whatever you know. And so now to have them be able to go and do something at a, at a new cool place like this is very exciting. Yeah, we we're excited to bring sports and social. Sports and social is a a concept that. Our companies have developed internally, and we've launched them in stadium districts to this state. So li- Live at the Battery down in Atlanta has this. Um, Live Texas, Texas Live, I'm sorry, has this in there. It's down in Arlington right next to the Dallas Cowboys Stadium. We're bringing that for the first time ever to a casino concept, and it is an unbelievable concept. Uh, the tagline for that place is raise the sports bar, and it couldn't be more true. It is, at its core, a sports bar. There mm-hmm. is a... 45 foot tall, massive two floor, 
two story screen that you can see from anywhere in, in the restaurant and on the casino floor. Wow. Uh, imagine watching Ben Roethlisberger on a 45 foot TV. It, it's larger, <laughs> it's larger than life. Meanwhile, so you, you can go there. It, it has all the traditional sports bar experiences, great beer, great food, mm-hmm. but it also has a, spots around there for people to bring their family. We have four bowling lanes in sports and social. We have, dart alleys we have shuffleboard we have ping pong we have all kinds of things for families like yourselves to come in and sort of experience live casino without even looking at the casino if they don't want to they yeah we has a completely separate entrance it's on the second floor you can walk right into sports and social and never even know that you're inside of a casino um you know there's there's ways to get up and down stairs into the casino atmosphere for those that like it but this this concept is is probably my most exciting concept that's going into this place. Mm-hmm. Uh, personally, I love I'm a huge sports fan, so I love yeah. the thought that I'm going to be able to watch either one massive game on this screen or we can split up this screen. We can watch we can broadcast up to 16 games simultaneously. Wow. Like imagine, you know, I, I'm a big college basketball fan having gone to UNLV and imagine I'm just I'm picturing myself being in heaven on the first Thursday of March Madness where yes. there's 64 games or 32 games going on and just, it's overload. It, right. And I, I love it. I can't wait to bring it. I can't wait for this community to experience it. Sports and Social is going to be unlike anything anybody in this area has ever seen. This yeah. this whole place, man, this whole place is going to be unlike anything anybody's ever seen. This is not your traditional slot hall. Right, um, yeah. It, it's It's something else. I'm really excited about that because, like, you know, when we were talking about acro- across Westmoreland there, that was kind of the thing. Everyone was like, hey, you know, maybe they should take that and build something for the kids and stuff. like." That. And it was just like, you know, there's been other businesses in town that have really tried that. And, you know, it, it's just like what we needed is exactly what you guys are going to deliver. It was, it's something for everyone. You know, it's not, we don't want, we don't need another place to go drop our kids off and, you know, sit in the parking lot and wait for them to be done doing what they're doing. Like the fact that, like you said, you can go in one entrance and really just be, you have no idea you're in a casino or whatever for anyone that that would, uh, you know, bother or whatever. But that is just, it's so awesome because like that really shows, you know, how, how much you guys were very in tune with, uh, you know, what, this community really kind of wanted there. It was, you know, we do want to have the fun. We want the casino. I'm telling you, we do. And there are some people that, you know, maybe, uh, maybe they're not down with that, but they do need a place to go. They need a place to go hang out and watch 45 foot tall Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. We know. And we're all about that. We're all about togetherness. Our whole, our whole company across all of our, verticals were all about togetherness uh, bringing people together and ha- letting them have a good time it just so happens that in the casino we get to add the layer of of the casino games and the slot machines and the table games and and trust me when i tell you this even though we're we have less slot machines and, and less table games than some of our bigger competitors in mm-hmm. the rivers and the meadows our slot machines are it's an unbelievable assortment in fact there's a couple of games on there that not a single other casino in the entire state of pennsylvania has uh, we're bringing the latest and greatest, but like you said, we we want togetherness. So your comment about another place to drop the kids off and wait for them—that's not our goal. Our goal yeah. is to bring families together, bring friends together, bring people together, and let them choose how they want to experience the night. And we're trying to give them a bunch of different avenues for that experience. Yeah, some of my favorite times, I think, uh, you know, pre-COVID have been, you know, we'll get uh, four tickets for the Pirates or something. And we head down and, uh, you know, when the kids were like kind of younger, it was tough to keep them in the seats. So we would always go up to like, you know, uh, one of the, one of the restaurants or something. And those were fun days because like, you know, we could just get a table, get some food, we eat, me and my wife can like have a beer or something. We run out to like the little overlook. We can watch the game. We can go back to the TVs. Kids can sit there and do whatever they want at the table. It was just like that to me, uh, you know, just the, your description of this is really putting me in mind of that. And that, that makes, I'm very pumped up about this. I, it's very I, fun. I'm disappointed that, uh, I haven't been able to go experience a game 
down in, uh, you know, I, yeah. I'm a, I grew up a huge baseball fan. I grew up, I'm sure we'll get to it. I grew up in Las Vegas, mm-hmm. uh, played baseball, loved baseball. It was my first true love was baseball. And everybody keeps telling me how awesome that park is. And so I was so excited to go it this season and so much fun, hopefully next season. Yeah. I, yeah. I hope things get back to normal soon. It's just like, it's so much fun to like go and tickets aren't expensive. It's just like, you know, the, the tickets that my wife has access to through work, uh, literally put us right down on the field. I mean, like I can bend over and touch dirt. Wow. And I'm like, you know, I have like Starling Marte out there just like kind of running around like within 20 feet of me. I'm just like, oh, hey, man, what's up? <laughs> it's just it's such a it's such a unique experience. And uh, you know, especially like when McCutcheon was still on the team. Good God. It was just like, you know, you're waving and the guy's just like, oh, hey. And That's- it's like. McCutcheon just waved at me, you know, it's, it's such a cool thing. We were right on the first base side. So that's pretty uh, cool. Yeah. It's, it's lots of fun things to do here. And I'm glad that, you know, you guys are really adding to that. You know, it's, we don't have to always pack up the car and travel 45 minutes to get somewhere that's right. fun. That's right. We're here. We're right in our, we're right in the, the, this community's backyard. Yeah. It's, it's super exciting. Tell me more about, you said you grew up in Vegas. I did. I grew up in Las Vegas. Um, and people always ask me, it was so funny, grow, go, growing up as a kid, I would, I would, you know, fly back and forth across the country every once in a while to visit, to visit people as a, you know, 10, 12, 13 year old. Yeah. Different times, I guess. But every time I was on the plane ride back to Las Vegas, inevitably some random stranger would ask me, you know, why, you know, what, what's bringing you to Las Vegas? And I say, well, you know, I live here. And uh, every single one, without fail, would ask me, oh, what, t- what hotel do you live in? <laughs> uh, and, you know, you have to try to explain to people that it's a place where, you know, a lot of fam- – it was a great place to grow up. I There was libraries. There was bowling alleys. There was – I had to go to school. I didn't like it some of the times. Yeah. It's just, it was a, you know, a fun little community to grow up in. And, and actually, when you grow up in Las Vegas, a lot of times you steer clear of the – they call it the strip that you steer clear of the strip in Las Vegas. We're all like, everybody knows what Las Vegas looks like right, from yeah. all, you know, oceans 11 or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But no, no, I grew up in Las Vegas, went to high school there. I went to college there. Um, and then, you know, ultimately ended up coming back East. Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, like to think like, you know, I've been there. I, I was there one time. Um, and to be completely honest, it Do you really, remember where you stayed? Uh, I stayed at the Flamingo. Okay. Yeah. It yeah, was yeah. cool. I know exactly. Um, yep. The hotel was awesome. I loved it. It wasn't, I thought that I would really, really enjoy Vegas. And it turned out that it was just a little too much overload for me. Like, I mean, there was just like, I enjoyed the area. I love the architecture. I love the hotels. I love the food. I love playing games. But it just got to a point where I was just like, all right, I think I'm kind of like ready to go home. Because it was like, we wanted to go swim. Well, we made this like long walk down to a, uh, I don't know, maybe it was a Dick Sporting Goods or something like that, I think, and to get a pair of uh, swimming trunks. And there was like no swimming trunks to be seen anywhere. And then finally I found one pair that didn't even fit, but I had to take them. And uh, so, you know, to go swimming that afternoon. And it was just like, it seemed like to get out of that strip was just so much work that I was just like, all right, I'll take these humongous swimming yeah. trunks. Yeah, this, the strip the strip does kind of, uh, you know, trap you into yeah. its own little ecosystem. But growing up there, you know, we're 20 minutes away from unbelievable hiking at Red Rock Mountains. There's, oh, my God, yeah. There's the ski, concert. There's uh, ski slopes. There. Um, you know, there's a, a lake. There's, I mean, there's stuff to do for everybody. Kind of like what I'm explaining about Live Casino. There's yeah. just something to do for everybody. I'll, we're just containing it into a, yeah, um, you know, a smaller space than Las Vegas. But yeah, growing up there was cool. It was it was a cool experience. I would certainly raise my kids there. Uh, it's awesome. If uh, if my career trajectory took me there, but um, yeah, it certainly is different than moving out east, though. Yeah, for it's sure. Different out here. Yeah. How are you? How do you deal with the winters? <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I I lived in in Maryland for the last nine years. Yeah. Before moving here, and I was very anxious about the winters. And <laughs> thankfully, the first winter was a little bit mild, so it yeah. gave me some time to buy like a winter coat, as nice. an example. There yeah. You go. Bought one, so I I think I still own that one. Um, <laughs> you know that the snow is different. 
It is for yeah. sure. It, in Las Vegas, I think it snowed maybe two times me growing up, and the whole wow. big, the, the whole like the most exciting snow was like three inches maybe. And, oh, yeah. and all of Las Vegas just like turned upside down. They had no idea what to hand, how to handle, <laughs> including myself. I didn't know how to handle it. Yeah. But uh, winter's still not my favorite. I won't lie. I love the 116 degree blistering. Yeah. Uh, Las Vegas summer. So winters out here are, are not my favorite. And and moving even further north is uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens this yeah. this year. It's wild. I think that uh, you know, in a past life, I was I was living somewhere like Vegas because I cannot stand winter. I hate winter. All my friends are like snowboarders and things like that. And I used to be, I used to love it, but I'm just like, you know what? I give me summer. That's right. All the time. You'll never, ever hear me complain about it being too (laughs) hot. Yeah. Never. Seriously. I mean, click the air conditioning on. I'm cool, man. Whatever. But, uh, so you said you went to UNLV, went to UNLV, studied gaming management, casino management. Um, there's not a lot of people out in the world like me who knew from the time they were a little bitty boy that they wanted mm-hmm. to be in a casino. A, ca- a casino is usually the path to there is sort of accidental. Okay. Um, whereas for me, I grew up in a casino family. My grandfather, my uncles, um, they were all participants in the casino industry, not necessarily in Las Vegas, just sort of around the country. And when I realized I wasn't good enough to play Major League Baseball, which was pretty soon in my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I started to explore the idea of going to into the casino industry. And it just so happened I grew up in Las Vegas that UNLV is the top casino management program in the entire country. And hmm. it all just sort of, it all sort of worked out. I, I, I'm excited that it happened that way because I've been taken on a career path that is uh, certainly exciting and led yeah. me to this wonderful community yeah it's awesome i mean like what kind of uh it's it's interesting because like i mean we don't hear about that type of like curriculum at a school or something like <laughs> yeah, that so, most like, people don't right yeah. so like what uh what was kind of involved with that what's what's something that might shock somebody be like oh that's what you did for a class that day or it, something it's actually funny because most people i actually have to clarify that the degree was gaming management and when you mm-hmm. tell pe- most people that they're like oh cool you did like video games and stuff right uh, to, yeah. to speak, <laughs> speaks to your point about people not really knowing the curriculum yeah. but you know there was a lot of math at the beginning it was a lot of statistics the mm-hmm. whole casino the whole idea of a casino is based built on a foundation of statistics so you have to really Absolutely. kind of understand the core but then a lot of sociology classes a lot of psychology classes about you know what does a gambler feel? Mm-hmm. What do they sense? What what senses motivate? Um, you know, everybody everybody always asks, "Why is the carpet so ugly?" There's a thought behind that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. You don't want, you don't want people looking at the carpet. You want them looking up. Yeah. Um, and then a little touch of hotel management and F and B management thrown in there. Yeah. But then you know some of the traditional classes like how to balance a ledger, how to do it, like all the traditional classes that you go through bi- through business management yeah. with just a little bit of extra math and hospitality management that's in. cool yeah that's it's so awesome i mean i'm not uh i'm not skilled at math or any of that so yeah that was all frightening from the second you started telling me about it <laughs> but, yeah um, Ma- math has come as a second nature to me so it wasn't so yeah. frightening but you know it it it's not uh it's not rocket science i guess yeah. is what i'm saying it's um there's people on our staff who are way better at math than I am even. Yeah. Um, it's sure. just, you just have to sort of understand the logic and the right. the big picture stuff is why they put you through all that math. Yeah. So how did you end up in marketing? So I started, so I needed an intern. I'll finish the, the path from college up to, to now and, and you'll get the picture. I, I, fin- I needed an internship to finish my degree. I had a couple options. I could have found a casino in the middle of Las Vegas that uh, I I could have gone and done a, a fine internship, mm-hmm. learning a little bit. But I knew somebody that was involved with the project in Live Casino in Maryland. And I asked them, you know, can I come on and help you build this place? Um, you know, a little back and forth on convincing to come out and whatever, how much are you going to pay an intern, that kind of thing. I was, yeah. I was, I was working as a sporting goods store manager, and um, he convinced me to come out eventually, and I started working as 
just whatever they needed help doing. I was, sometimes I would throw sticky notes up on a wall to help them design the org chart. Sometimes I helped pick out which security system we were going to be using, or at least I thought I was helping. I probably wasn't helping at all. Um, And eventually I found myself in the slots department helping with like choosing which machines to put out on the casino floor, helping pick, you know, the different bet configurations, where they're going to be, that kind of Mm -hmm. thing. And I really like that. Um, I transitioned over to be a slot attendant, which is some helping people when they win jackpots, helping them get paid, helping make sure the machines are sort of okay. functioning properly and that the customers are having a good time. And then, like I said, Maryland passed a law to allow for table games. So I went and I tried to learn how to be a dealer. But, but essentially, my whole path was just learn as much about every single position yeah. in the casino as humanly possible and do it as, as early in my career as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I went and dealt. I dealt craps for a week, yeah, um, which was a really fun experience. Craps is now my favorite game. Oh, uh, yeah? I, I was used to be terrified of it, but once I learned how to deal it, it is now I, yeah. I won't play any other game when I go for myself. That's awesome. I was going to ask you. That's cool. Yeah. That's interesting. So then I moved into a role called database marketing, which is, um, you know, very numbers oriented, very behind the scenes. People usually don't see database marketing people out on a casino floor. Mm -hmm. And if they do, that probably means something went wrong. Um, you know, we were responsible for sending all the mail and email that customers get telling about their different offers and things like that. And, I just kind of stuck around in marketing after that. My my old manager, who I used to report to for this role, used to, used to like to say that she was extending my lease by a year every year. Yeah, uh, to <laughs> you know, sort of keep me in her department and keep me under her wing. And I started to branch out a little bit. And in addition to database marketing, I oversaw promotions, events, the players club. I sort of started to branch out and oversee a lot of the different marketing areas. But mm-hmm. database database marketing was always my core. So it's not something I went to school for. It's not anything that I thought I was going to end up in. Yeah. But uh, cr- career trajectory just sort of took me there. I spent a lot of the first couple of years learning a bunch of different departments, and that has proved incredibly beneficial. But, you know, marketing is kind of my home now. Uh, yeah. And I don't think I'm going anywhere from marketing. Yeah. It's awesome. I, yeah, it was, uh, you know, I went to school for video. Um, it was fun. I, I got to do that. And then, you know, Everybody in my class, you know, they had different ideas of what video was and filmmaking. It was, uh, you know, they wanted to move to L.A. or New York. Me, I wanted to start my own business and just make commercials and and do things like that. And so that was the path that I stuck on. And uh, I ended up in a marketing department uh, at American Eagle. I was a video director there. And, uh, you know, that led me to do bigger jobs and things. And, And now it's just like... It's such a it's such a fun thing to be able to do different things like every day, and uh, you know, help out like the community and things like that. And it's just it's it's been great. So I, lo- I love marketing. What led you to podcasts? I've been meaning to ask you that. Yeah, that's the that's the part that was like kind of like a weird detour. I started doing um, YouTube videos. So I started making YouTube videos just to kind of allow my creativity to kind of take more of a hold and. Um, because like when you're in a big business like American Eagle or something like that, you're shooting jeans and t-shirts yeah. and you know, it gets pretty repetitive and then it starts to kind of turn into like an assembly line. It's like this guy gave me the script and I do this and I hand it off to the editor and she did that and like, you know, so it was it, the YouTube really kind of just like was my creative outlet and uh, I felt really comfortable talking to the camera and in and, and that and then I was like, well, I need to get more followers on this page. So what I was doing was reaching out to other YouTubers and saying, Hey, let me interview you. And then what I wanted them to do was like their listeners come and convert to me as well. So I was just like, all right, I'm going to steal some of your people and uh, not steal bit share. And um, I know, I know, I know what that's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh So we, um, you know, that's kind of how that whole idea started. And then I started thinking like, you know, in this community, I think it would be awesome to get the stories of like these businesses and these business owners and things, and then basically do the same thing. I'm going to advertise my video business at the beginning of this very podcast. You're going to hear the ad and that's before you get to listen to Brian talk about the live casino. (laughs) (laughs) So it was just kind of a way to market my business, uh, via word of mouth, which I still believe is definitely 
the most impactful way that you can market a business. Yeah. Yeah. Your trajectory into podcasts is like a lot of people's trajectory into the casino business. It happened by accident, kind of just a series of decisions that led you to this. That's cool. It's so much fun. I love doing it. And I love like talking and like, because, you know, I had uh, like the guys from the stereo shop, just a, a, an old school business here in town. Um, it's so cool to like talk to them. You know that they're the stereo shop. They have like all the coolest TVs and the stereos and all that stuff. But to talk to them as people and see like what they're interested in and kind of like, you know, the business has changed hands and things like that. And like, you didn't even realize until like the very end of the episode, we had the owner sitting here and like, I knew that, but you wouldn't have known that because the business kind of wasn't changing hands at that point. Yeah. So it was, it was really neat just to see like what everybody likes to do on their own time. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's cool to know that you grew up in Vegas and you ended up in the (laughs) casino industry, but not in Vegas across the country. Right. Yeah. Weirdest thing I've ever craziest. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Get to get a feel for the local community. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. I learn a lot, and it's uh, basically like a little networking group in here. I mean, a one-on-one networking group every week. It's <laughs> it's uh, it's it's awesome. That's great. Because I mean, like, there's people that you know I reach out to now that I've met on this podcast, and I'm like, oh, that's their specialty. I'm gonna work with them, or you know, yeah. vice versa. They'll call me and say like, hey, uh, we need a social media video. Can you come and help us cool. out? Cool. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's really neat. So. Do you have any uh, any plans on telling us a definite opening date? I sure can. All right, let's hear it. So we plan on opening to the general public on November 24th. Oh, man. Which is just over 30 days away. That's we're, so awesome. We're going to do, you know, we're a very COVID conscious. Um, we want to be safe. We want to do things the right way. We want to gain the community's trust. So we're going to do a a little ribbon cutting ceremony that's just for a small group of people on the 17th. Mm -hmm. From the 17th up until the 24th, we'll just start to gradually grow the invite list of people who can come to the casino. We're going to do a series of six or seven days of invited only days where, you know, customers that have signed up for their cards already, Mm -hmm. um, or other local community leaders and business people will start to gradually invite them to different days. And then, yeah, on November 24th at 6 a.m., we're going to be open to the general public for walk-ups and, and um, couldn't be more excited. It's, it is coming. There is a lot to do still, yeah. but it's coming. We're going we're gonna to be there. That's awesome. It's, it's super exciting. And, like, the restaurants, everything's going to be full steam ahead November 24th. Yeah, we're... Everything on November 24th yeah. will be fully open. Excellent. You know, we, we do have one additional concept that we have in our back pocket that we haven't announced yet, but nice. uh, we'll announce it before the grand opening. I think people are going to be really excited about one additional venue that we're going to have up our sleeve, but that one probably won't be open at the grand mm-hmm. opening. Um, cool. We'll have to give you guys some intel on, on when that's going to open at a future date. Yeah, that's yeah. excellent. Did you guys run into uh, just tag this off at the end here. I wanted to ask about like COVID and stuff. How did that kind of impact the schedule of you guys opening? It, you know, COVID impacted everybody's everything at right, this yeah. point. And so, you know, governor Wolf imp- imposed a construction shutdown on, on everybody across the whole state. Right. We were shut down for a handful of days. Uh, that really gave us a lot of time to figure out how to safely bring the construction workers back. Um, what protocols to put in place to make sure that we were doing things the right way. Cause mm-hmm. like I said, you know, pe- people like to come to places where they feel comfortable and if they don't feel like it's clean and they don't feel like it's safe, they won't come. And so right. that's, that's part of our overarching mission is to give people a welcome place to come. And so the shutdown gave us some time to figure out what our protocol should be. Uh, we were certainly delayed by a handful of weeks as a result of that. Yeah. Um, but honestly, it was a good few weeks for us because it, it really gave us a chance to, to outline. And then and COVID's impacted everybody. Um, yeah. You know, you heard as soon as we announced that we were hiring a bunch of staff, you heard from other local competitors in the casino and hospitality space that they were letting go a bunch of their staff. And so from that standpoint, we were able to pick up some of those some of those team members. We had a lot of 
people in the local community that were impacted from the food and beverage and hospitality standpoint. We had a lot of people that were impacted by COVID that we were able to pick up and bring as part of our team and as our family. Um, it's fantastic. You never like to see people put out and, and have a hard time, but we, we were fortunate that we were able to bring some of them on board um, in a time of need, and, and we're proud of that. Yeah. Along with what you said about, like, the safety concerns and things like that, um, what kind of, uh, you know, restrictions will you guys have as far as, like, the public coming in on the 24th? Yeah, we we have a very aggressive COVID safe plan. It's called Play It Safe at Live, and it includes thermal scanners at every entrance. It includes plexiglass dividers at all the slot machines, at the table games, at every time that customers are walking up to a booth to get help. There's an aggressive cleansing of high touch surfaces plan. Um, you know, it, it's crazy. It's it's funny walking around our Maryland property where we're copying this from. Mm-hmm. You know, they they worked with Johns Hopkins, uh, oh wow, hospital yeah. to sort of develop all this stuff. And this play it safe plan is being copied nationwide, not only by casinos but by other businesses. So we're very proud of this play it safe at live plan. When you walk around Maryland, it's really cool to see like the one guy's got the ghostbusters backpack on yeah. and he's spray sanitizing <laughs> the machines that are, that are empty. We're, we're being very forward thinking in all of this. Yeah. Masks are going to be required. I, I, you know, we, we're doing everything we possibly can in line with the CDC protocols with the Pennsylvania gaming control board requirements and going above and beyond that. Cause our main focus is to make the guests and the team members feel like it's the safest place to be. Cause I mean, that's the, that's the core of everything. You yeah. won't go to a business if you don't feel safe. You won't go, you won't have a good time. You won't enjoy going to work. You won't, is if you don't feel safe, it's not going to be a good experience. And so right. that's the core of everything. That's excellent. All good news there, man. Do you uh, want to give us some plugs? Yeah, sure. You Tell know, us where we can find it. There, uh, go to the. We're, we opened up a preview center in the Westmoreland Westmoreland Mall. It's sort of out there near Center Court, where potential customers can come by and sign up for their rewards card, get a bunch of cool free swag. Up to like, there's a really cool Nike jacket out there that, uh, you know, live logo Nike jacket. Nice. Uh, just get more information about uh, about the the property openings. We're running an online gaming tournament right now for, it starts on the 19th of October and it'll run for a couple of weeks. And the people who to place in the top five of that online slots tournament will be invited to our ribbon cutting ceremony, have a VIP experience, food tastings, you know, travel to and from the property. Um, they can go enter that tournament at uh, playlive.com. And, uh, you know, we're really excited. There's, there's around 30 days left until we open Yeah, uh, from the recording of this. And, uh, you know, we want people to come out and, and sign up and they can do that at, at the Westmoreland mall preview center. Awesome. It's very cool. Um, Instagram, you guys are on Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, find us all the handles. Um, you know, there we're posting every day a new bit of information about the casino opening. Mm-hmm. You might see some sneak preview construction pictures about what's going yeah. on inside. We're not going to unveil the whole ball of wax, but yeah, follow us on those uh, Instagram, Twitter, and, and Facebook and stay up to date on everything that's going on. Awesome. Thanks, Brian, for coming in. I appreciate you taking the time to come here and you know share all of this information with the community. Yeah, no, thanks, Jordan. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Excellent. Yeah.